Hello and thanks for stopping by. This is The Master of Magic for the Commodore 64, published by Mastertronic Limited in 1985. This is a dungeon crawler adventure game and is not the same as the game Master of Magic, which is a more modern strategy game. The screen is divided into different sections. The top right displays text, and that's basically what's going on in the game. When you use commands, that's where it lists the results if you fight or shoot a spell, that sort of thing. Above this section there are two little meters. M is for magic, and B is for your body strength. When your magic meter runs out, you can't cast spells anymore. When your body strength runs out, you die. On the top left is a box, and this shows your position in the dungeon. You use the joystick or keyboard to wander your icon around and look for treasure in opponents. Or avoid opponents, maybe. I like how this map has fog of war turned on. You can't see everything in the room at once. You have a field of view, and as you walk down a hallway or behind walls, you will lose sight of various areas. There's an orange bar in the center of the screen that will list the possible commands. If you walk over to an item on the map and press the fire button, a menu will appear and give you various options. These options will change, depending on what exactly you're doing. If you're interacting with something, or you have something in your inventory, these things will change. It's all dependent on what's going on. Run is the one command that's really static here, and that's what gets you back into the dungeon map, so you can walk around. And most of the other commands should be self-explanatory for the most part. Things like inventory, examine, cast, swap, or put down. Those are, those are some of the basics. When you get close to an enemy icon on the map, a monster will appear at the bottom of the screen. It's a little graphical representation. You'll see this also for other things like stairs, doors, and items. If a creature appears in the bottom window, you should probably press the fire button right away. This pauses the game and brings up the menu, so you can potentially choose what to do. If you have magic, maybe it's worth casting a spell. If a creature is close enough, it should allow you to attack with a regular hand-to-hand -hand attack, but if they're too far away, that option won't be available. You can only use distance attacks when that happens. In this game, you basically start with nothing and this means you actually can't carry much. You can just carry something in each hand. So early on, if you start collecting things, you're going to have to figure out what you need to keep or what you need to drop. As you progress, you'll start to find various items to assist with this problem. I found a suit of armor first, and as you would imagine, it's pretty useful. Using magic early on in the game seems to be the way to go, at least to start, because with no weapons, you can really only hit things with your bare hands, and that's not very good. Magic is also a distance weapon, so you can get people from a distance before they can attack you. Eventually, I found a helmet, a shield, some rings, a mace, and a dagger. I think the best item I found, though, probably was the backpack. It is great to be able to store multiple items. I know you can also gain health from potions, but you seem to not randomly gain health over time. I'm going to have to keep a closer eye on that, because health is pretty important here. I have to say this game is pretty clever. I really like the layout of the game. It's basically a mix of a text adventure, a top-down roamer, and you get to see first-person images of creatures and the environment on the bottom of the screen as they approach. I think that works really well here, and it keeps you involved in the game. The map is static here, so if you plot it out on paper with all the locations of the various items, I'm sure you can get through this one easier. Certainly knowing where to get a weapon, the quickest way would be useful. And a backpack, of course. Without a backpack, you're really hampered in what you can carry and do. Also, you need to make sure you're using the correct hand for your weapon. If you have a weapon equipped, and you see that when you're hitting creatures, it's a fist that's doing damage and not your weapon, you might need to just swap your weapon to your other hand. You can also run away from a fight if you don't want to battle, but the creatures will pursue you over distances you might have to actually really work at trying to get away from a creature completely. They don't easily give up. I find games like this really interesting. There's a definite level of innovation here that I find admirable. I know with more modern game development, programmers are working off of some type of a platform. Back in the early days of programming, they were usually developing from the ground up, which is why we get games like this that look significantly different from other games of the same basic type. The programmers here had to figure out the interface, the map, the movement, the graphics, the whole thing. This game also has a really good music track as well, 
We're talking classic Commodore 64 synth music, and it fits really well with the dungeon theme. Well done. This is overall a unique and well-put-together game. I would have gone crazy for this one when I was a kid, and I'm really glad I found it now. It's really fun roaming around looking for items. It's definitely a clever one, and I've been sinking some time into it for sure. Well, that's all I have for the Master of Magic for Commodore 64. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll catch you next time.